everyone. I'm driving this evening to Coston, BC, which is by Karameas in the Okanagan. Um, I'm there to work tomorrow on horses, and then the next day I'm in Oliver, and so that's what I'm doing for work the next few days. Um, I'm gonna try to knock a few uh, requests um, off the list this weekend as I drive <laughs> to and from my locations. Um, one of my friends had asked um, how I got uh, the song written about me by Ian Tyson, which is called Saddle Brown Girl for um, those who haven't heard it or have heard it and didn't realize it was about me. <laughs> so uh, basically uh, I was working for a cutting horse trainer when I was 17, uh, Jim Simpson, and his wife was Cub Wright. Um, who was, uh, her dad was a good friend, Pat Wright was a good friend of my dad's, and then uh, Cub was friends with my mom and stuff, so uh, I went over there in my graduating year, um, and I worked for them, uh, got out of school early, but still had to write my exams and stuff. Um, I had shortly after, like, uh, or shortly before that, started riding uh, Saddle Bronc, and they had got some shoots for me and stuff to kind of help me out, and um, Jim was good friends with Ian Tyson and Cub had suggested uh, one time to him that maybe he should write a song about me. Well, nothing really came about, about that and um, probably, well, let me think, think here, I think it was 2011 or 12 that he wrote the song about me. So let's say uh, around 2011 um, in the spring, Ian had uh, got in contact with me. Well, just prior to that, I um, Cub had called my mom and said that she thought Ian was sort of interested in writing a song about me now because he'd been having a bit of a dry spell with writing and looking for new material. And so Cub had suggested that you know she maybe now was the time to write a song about me. Um, so Ian, Ian got in touch with me, and we met uh, in Kamloops, BC. He drove from Alberta, and then I met went a little bit north and met him in Kamloops. And we basically just spent part of the afternoon visiting. Um, I think maybe we had dinner. Uh, it was just a little bit of chit chat here and there uh, for a few hours in the afternoon. And he kind of just asked me some questions, and we kind of got to know each other. And um, I went home, and and he wrote the song about me. So. It was pretty cool when the song came out because for having spent so little time with me, I think he did a really good job of uh, writing the song about me and kind of seeing the insight um, into sort of what I was going through as being a female in the sport or even my dedication to it over the years. Um, the one line, it says, uh, hey Kayla, what you gonna do? Um, <laughs> what do you have to do to make your dreams come true, right? How far you got to go to make your dreams come true? I've got the words all wrong. I should know them off by heart. <laughs> so, interestingly, like, that was one of the points in my life where I was considering, you know, maybe retiring from riding. So, the song actually did help kind of pick me up. I was uh, suffering from depression around the, that time. And it kind of helped lift my spirits up and refocus and, you know, realize that I had more to live and I wanted to make more of my dreams come true. Um, yeah, so, but it's weird, like, having a song written about you. Uh, it's so weird. Um, I mean, it's really cool, but it's so strange because it's like, a song's written about me. And... It's funny how many people have heard the song and didn't realize till much later that it was written about me. And even now I actually run into some people that say they, um, that they didn't know it was about me. Like, <laughs> you know, they'll be like, hey, have you heard that song? It's a pretty cool song. And I'm like, yeah, it's about me. <laughs> and uh, even though my lyric, my name, my full name is there in the middle of it, you know, they're saying Kayla Muscle and Shoot For, you know, British Columbia, Canada. Um, 
Yeah, so I've, I've actually met a lot more people just, and they kind of come towards me and then become some of my fans and friends and stuff, which has been pretty cool as a result of that song. And I have friends all the time that will send me snap, like just a screenshot of their playing the song. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it was a big honor for me to have the song written about me. And funny enough, like when I was, um, I don't know how old I would be, but I would have been rodeoing. So probably in my early teens, much, much before um, me ever considering riding the saddlebuck. And um, I really liked, like my, my parents listened to Ian Tyson and I uh, really liked Ian Tyson's music. And one of my favorite songs was the Casey Tips song. And I kind of had the back of my mind that, you know, wouldn't that be cool if Ian wrote a song about me someday? So, you know, skip forward uh, or fast forward, you know, a couple decades later, um, it finally happened. So it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm definitely honored that he wrote that song about me. And um, yeah, what can I say? I, I mean, I end up hashtag and sometimes I'm Saddlebunk Girl because that's how a lot of people like know me by. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's pretty, um, words can't even really describe, you know, to have that sort of thing written about you and to be honored by that song. And um, it kind of makes all of my, everything I've gone to to get to where I am um, worthwhile like it, it it means something and even the song itself has inspired other people um, I've heard and a, a lot of um, young kids I always enjoy hearing that that like that's their favorite song especially little girls and um, even even little boys so <laughs> you never know um, yeah so then that's basically my story on uh, the Ian Tyson song um, I'm gonna cut it off at this one because I wanted to talk next about the song, um, the Reba McIntyre song that I was part of, um, featured riding in her music video. So that's up next and we'll talk to you soon.